So here's my mid-90s table saw my dad gave me. Uh, a few years ago when I moved into this house, uh, I had to do a few upgrades to it. Uh, the legs were completely rotted out from sitting in a dank-ass basement for 25 years. Uh, but otherwise, the thing is really solid and really great. I went to Harbor Freight, got a generic tool leg set that I threw together, and it just uses a piece of plywood on the bottom to kind of interface the legs to the table saw itself. It worked out pretty well, but uh, of course, there's no place for the wood dust to actually go after that. So I thought, you know, being the young man I was two years ago, I'll just drill a hole in the bottom and 3D print a little adapter to go and have my, uh, you know, cheap, shitty shock back just kind of plug into the bottom. That didn't really work uh, because the hole was this big and, you know, there's just too much air movement, um, you know, it, just too many inlets and everything. So uh, we're going to try to fix that now because I just sawed about four six inch wide PVC trim boards. And the PVC dust is horrific. It's a nightmare. It is the worst thing I've ever had to deal with uh, so far cutting anything with the saw. Wood dust is fine, but when you have the PVC plastic dust just kind of caked all over you, even with a mask, you can still feel it in all of your pores and, you know, pick it out of your teeth afterwards. So I'm going to actually figure out like a dust collection uh, for this, like an actual one that might actually work a little bit better. So I hopped on my computer and just kind of started 3D printing. And uh, then I got to uh, uh, these pieces right here. So the first piece I made was I thought that probably should have like a funnel, a bigger opening for the sawdust to come because right now it's just a flat plane with a hole this big in the bottom of it. And uh, now there's sawdust caked all around the edge on the inside from what I can see. So this was the first piece. This is three different types of filament because I've completely run out of PLA somehow. And uh, this is the largest I could make on my Prusa i3. Uh, it turned out pretty well. Uh, I spray painted it with some cheap spray paint. Uh, I had lying around and lined the inside with aluminum tape as a hope that sawdust would just kind of slide into it and just kind of fall into the center here. So from that, I also printed this little angled piece, trying to make it as smooth as possible. This didn't come out that well. Uh, again, this is the, pretty much the last of the filament I had. Uh, I'm hoping that that's a gentle enough, like, curve for uh, the air to go, and then I made a little adapter. Uh, this is kind of what's on the bottom now. Uh, it's kind of screwed up to the top, and it just doesn't work. Uh, so I'm going to go and uh, glue these together with some uh, super glue and try to go and uh, aluminum tape some of the, you know, holes on the side of this thing uh, that are unnecessary. Of course, there's holes right here to kind of keep the motor cool. I don't run this that much uh, for very long, so I don't think it really needs that much cooling to the end, to the motor. So I'm probably going to go and tape up a few of those holes, uh, probably get some foam and shove it in some of the other cracks and crevices. And hopefully we can go and get a really, you know, nice vacuum and pulling all the shit that, that just is flying everywhere. So uh, I guess I'll glue this up. We'll go and spray paint these to go and match this, glue that on, and then flip this thing over and we will see how it works. Well, while that, you know, dries, I guess it's probably best if I, um, you know, unplug this thing and flip it over so we can actually figure out where I got
gotta cut the big ass hole in it. So this is what it has been for a while now, literally just a hole cut in the plywood and uh, a 3D printed piece. You know, it doesn't look terrible. It does what it needs to do. Uh, these screws probably are not strong enough, so that's why I added these pieces of wood that kind of sandwich this metal frame. I'll, I should probably address that at some point. But um, not not right now. So I guess uh, we'll we'll look at this. So there's going to be a significantly larger hole. So we're going to go from a hole in the bottom like that to something like this, with the piece coming out the side here. So it's much easier to actually access. So the hole will be right there. So I guess I should sketch this out and figure out. Where it's gonna go? These, this is only held in with four screws, which probably isn't gonna be enough. But I'm probably gonna use some silicone or construction adhesive. Okay, I was not expecting it to work. I just kind of spray painted on the inside of this, hoping that uh, this would be like a mask. And um, it it kind of worked. It 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 kind of worked. You can see a faint outline of where it has to be, which uh, is enough for me. So I guess I'm gonna go and just use a pencil or something to go and make sure that I have a good line, and then we will figure out what tool to use. Well, uh, this thing is caked in sawdust. Uh, yeah, okay, so my solution before was not effective at all. So I'm gonna vacuum the inside of this, get all that sawdust out, and then we can uh, think about adding our thing to it. This is progress. Okay, a little update. Uh, I split it upside down after vacuuming it all out and turned it on just to make sure that everything worked because I had to tr you know, check. And uh, I turned the thing on and now this entire room is, is, is just all wood dust and PVC dust that was all kind of in the nooks and crevices. So uh, that's awful. But... Uh, we're gonna power through and unplug it and flip it back upside down. And... Okay, yeah, we'll continue. So that hole I cut was awful, but uh, it fits and works very nice and is almost perfectly lined up. Uh, so this is pretty much it. Uh, I'm gonna take the screws that held this on, these long ass screws, and uh, I think I'm gonna use these screws to hold that on. I was thinking about using like some type of, what, uh, the, the latex silicone that I have for like trim and stuff just to, you know, seal it. But um, I don't think I care enough to do that. I do see that there's a lot of cracks and crevices. Of course, of course the front is just a huge crevice. Uh, so I think I'm going to go and try to close up the sides. Try to direct most of the airflow uh, from the top. So late last night, I made sure that this was uh, painted real nice and uh, threw it on here. I glued it on with some contact adhesive, the same stuff that, hold on, one of my shoes, which worked amazing so far. So this should be pretty solid. Uh, if it's not, then we have an issue, but I, I think that's 
That's very good. So that's that's what it looks like shooting out the side there. So let's flip her over and see how she looks. So that's what she looks like, and uh, I'm pretty happy with it. It is shooting out the opposite way of what I originally planned, but I thought if I'm going to use this table saw and I'm going to be, you know, cutting things, I'm going to want to come around the side maybe to go and, you know, get the wood or whatever I'm cutting. And I don't want to trip over this vacuum because it's sitting here because it's coming out. So I thought, well, this table eventually is not going to have anything under it. So I can just kind of put this underneath the table for the usually for the most part, and then I can just plug it in here or I can plug it in my other saw. So I think underneath the table is going to be where it lives. So I think that is pretty nice. Big issue we have next is to go and kind of address where, you know, all the kind of the leakage. Of course, this is going to be a place where there's going to be a lot of air leakage. So not as much suction through the top. So I've decided that I'm going to use some aluminum tape over these vents here. There's a lot of drafts, so it's not like the motor's gonna get too hot. I'm, I don't use this thing for like extended periods of time, so it won't be that bad, but these are also gaps that are gonna be an issue. Uh, we don't need these gaps either, so I got this weather strip foam that I'm gonna shove in there. I'm gonna vacuum that out because there's a lot of dust and you know maybe get that so i'll do that real quick well i got it done uh i did use a little bit of aluminum tape uh i really like the aluminum tape it's just so easy you just kind of push it into the hole and it makes a little crease and then you cut on that crease so that's mostly cut up i don't really use uh i don't really cut anything at an angle on this but if i had to i could just easily rip that off i did the same thing with the holes on the side right here uh, there's a little bit of a gap up here still, but that's perfectly fine. Uh, it should be better than it was foam on this little crevice because this was a gap that went right inside. There's a lot of dust that would come out of there. Uh, another hole here, and then this one, this is where the motor is. Uh, I left a little bit of a gap on uh, the top, a little bit here. And then on the back, another strip. So I think we'll do some slow motion shots. Uh, of some dust suckage because I am not going to cut anything right now. It's Friday afternoon. Well, that wasn't as impressive as I thought it would look uh, in the end, um, but eh. okay. But uh, I did push the rest of it in into there, as you can see. Uh, that was just the one spray paint cap full of dust. So let's go and see how much of that dust actually got into there, because I cleaned it out just now, or just before I did that. So I, I there there shouldn't it should be like. A, like a significant amount of that dust in here. So let's, let's see. Uh, is that a, is that a spray paint caps worth of, of dust in there? Uh, yeah, there's like crud on the bottom here, but, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's probably pretty close to a cap full. So I'm, I'm hoping that a majority of that got, into that there, but uh, I think that's a success. Well, I have really no idea if this actually is going to be better than it was. I'm pretty sure because I put a funnel at the bottom of this thing instead of a tiny little hole. So at least some of the dust should make its way in there. And we fixed all the holes around, or a bunch of the holes around it. So there should be more, you know, vacuum from the actual hole where the saw blade is. So I'm gonna go and say this is a success. It worked out. Pretty well. I uh, used up all my filament, so I better check outside because I think I got like four rolls just dropped off by the postal service. So I guess, you know, I'll catch you guys 
and the next video where I make something completely random and stupid. Also, update. Uh, I'm wearing the shoes. It's been like three weeks of these shoes. You know, if you haven't seen the video where I make new soles for my shoes, which are these shoes, uh, you should watch that because these this works perfect. This works amazing. It, 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 I've you know the only thing that I've found is that they're a little slippy in like the produce section of the grocery store where they have those slick tiles, but. Otherwise, you know, it's perfect outdoors, indoors. I wear them all the time now. So, um, yeah, I'll see you on the next adventure, I guess.